Welcome to Getting to Know You. This was a, a program designed by Betty Osan, and the focus was we live in a small community and many people have many interesting stories and we've invited them to share those stories that we wouldn't necessarily know about them if they weren't willing to share with us. Um, our speaker today, or the one being interviewed, is Bill Waddell, and he was our past um, president of the Residence Council, and he truly has had an amazing life, he and his wife, and um, they've traveled all over the world and made a real difference. And so, Bill, I'll invite you to share your experiences. Thank you, Sharon. I look forward to doing this now that I've got it all down on paper. <laughs> I was born in Chicago in August of 1938. And the first 12 years of my life, I lived on the south side of the city. When I was in the seventh grade, my family moved to a southern suburb. I didn't know it at the time, but this was a very strategic move that would have long-term impact on my life. One of our neighbors had three daughters, one of whom was named Mary Jane who was a year younger than I was. Mary Jane has said that when I and my brother, who was two years older than me, moved into the neighborhood, the neighborhood went downhill. <laughs> I graduated from high school in 1958 and was not an honor student. Mary Jane graduated in 1957 and she was an honor student. We married in 1959 when we were both 20 and moved to Longview, Texas, where I attended a work-study program at Letourneau College, and Mary Jane was employed at a local department store. We lived in Longview less than a year before moving to Waco, Texas, where I enrolled in Baylor University and worked in the credit department of Sears Roebuck our family consists of two boys and a girl born to us and a Korean daughter who joined our family when she was nine years old. Currently, we have uh, nine grandchildren and nine great-grandchildren. I graduated from Bay Earlier August of 25th of 1961 and we moved to Houston where I started working for a Southwestern Bell Telephone Company. I worked for telephone companies for 33 years in many locations. Texas, Illinois, Iowa, Michigan, Florida, Connecticut, Texas again, and Venezuela. My assignments were varied, managing data centers, training director, personnel director, division manager, etc. In the last two years of my employment with General Telephone, 93 and 94, Mary Jane and I traveled to Africa on a safari with Africa Inland Mission. On that trip, our hearts went out to Africa and we started preparation for becoming second career missionaries with AIM, but that did not work out. However, my boss had known I was interested in retiring and he asked if I was open for another assignment. And uh, I said, well, how long did you have in mind? <laughs> and he said, four years. So Mary Jane and I discussed this and prayed about it and sensed that it would be a good idea for us. So we were off to an assignment in Texas for two years and Venezuela for another two years. And then we returned to Arizona where our widowed mothers both lived. And during this time, you learned to speak Spanish. During this time, I had a lot of Spanish lessons and uh, poquito. <laughs> now I'd like to tell you about the most exciting time of our lives. Fast forward to 2001. We attended a meeting hosted by Walk Through the Bible and its founder, Bruce Wilkinson, at the Atlantis Hotel in the Bahamas. A few months later, we attended a conference in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where Bruce was the main speaker. 
Bruce and I were breakfasting alone, and he asked me if I could be available to go to Atlanta for 30 days to assist in setting up a new venture called Global Vision Resources. The work, <clears throat> the work of Global Vision Resources was the development of videos and training materials based on the books that had been authored by Bruce. Mary Jane and I prayed about going to Atlanta and determined that this was part of, our God, a part of God's plan for us. At the end of the initial 30 days, Bruce asked if I would take the responsibility for managing GBR. Mary Jane and I had thought that this might be what God had in mind for us, so we agreed. This being the case, we returned to Scottsdale, put our two properties on the market, and returned to Atlanta. However, after two years, uh, Bruce decided that he was going to move to Africa and GVR was going with him. This was a great surprise after having purchased a home in Atlanta. A few days later, I received a call from our Atlanta church, Perimeter. The missions department asked if I would be willing to represent the church in a new venture with six other mega churches in the USA. The focus of the group would be developing partnerships between the USA churches and African churches to address the issue of HIV AIDS orphans in sub-Saharan Africa. At that time, there were more than 20 million Asian orphan, or African orphans. I attended the California meeting and the first day and the first morning of the second day, I just didn't see where I fit in. The afternoon of the second day, the conference leader started the meeting by recommending that I be appointed to go to Africa <laughs> to identify church networks and begin a search for mature African churches that would be willing and able to partner with North American churches regarding caring for HIV orphans. The name of the group formed that week in California was Churches Together. It initially consisted of the original six megachurches. However, it soon became related to several NGOs, which means non-governmental organizations, like World Vision, who were already at work in Africa regarding the, regarding the orphans. They were extremely helpful in guiding us to find our way and introducing us to African church leaders and African government officials. The church I am currently a member of is the Scottsdale Bible Church, which became one of the first churches that engaged with the African churches and communities. In 2004, SBC began working with two communities in Tanzania, Mairoa, a remote Maasai village, and Kondoa, a Muslim community, the primary goal was to relieve areas of orphan need, nutritious food, education, health care, and a hopeful future. Over a period of time, schools were built in the two communities, wells were dug to provide clear water, clean water, large gardens were developed for raising vegetables for the community and some for sale. Improved medical and dental health was facilitated through visiting medical teams from SBC and providing training for pastors and lay leaders demonstrating the love of Christ through all of these activities. Christian education classes in English uh, were started uh, at the lower grades. And as the children advanced, additional classrooms were constructed, classrooms were added, and younger children were admitted to the school, and so it was continued until today. In order to teach in English, Tanzanian teachers had to be trained in how to teach in English. And so there was uh, an opportunity for that, and there was uh, an organization in uh, Tanzania that did just that. Children attend the primary classes for nine years and secondary school for four years. 
and hopefully continue to vocational college or university. After 16 years, there are 900 children in the primary grades in the two communities and 450 children in the secondary through high school. And the children are scoring some of the highest test scores in their district. A primary school, uh, SBC supports the operating costs of the Myroa and Condola public primary schools through a sponsorship program. A primary school sponsor pays $40 a month. A secondary school sponsor pays $45 a month for a student in a government school and $75 a month for a student in a private school which is significantly more effective than the government schools. Sponsors and others are encouraged to go on short-term mission trips to Tanzania to learn about the project and to meet their sponsored children. We originally went to Atlanta in response to Bruce Wilkinson's request that I assist with the development of Global Vision Resources for 30 days. We returned to Scottsdale five and a half years later. Little did we know how much God would be teaching us in those years. We were depending on God to guide us through many difficult situations. A proverb in the Bible, chapter 3, verses 5 and 6 says, Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Do not try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do. Everywhere you go, he is the one who will keep you on track. Traveling and learning about Africa was very important. But an African uh, saying is, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So in traveling around, it was very important for us uh, Americans to learn how to be much more uh, related in our, in, our, in our relationships with the uh, African people. So it was a great experience. And uh, Mary Jane and I both survived. Thank you very much. Bill, yes. did you have the opportunity to meet any of the children that were sponsored? Oh, yes. Did they, can you tell us some of the stories about those? Um, well, uh, the children at this, uh, well, let's see, I, probably that goes back to about 2004. Uh -huh. I, had, I had a sponsored child. Uh -huh. And so we would go to um, Tanzania and uh, spend uh, a week or 10 days and uh, be very involved with the uh, kids in school. The kids are just so excited. Um, they have uniforms and they look wonderful. And uh, it's just a joy to be around them. And they're singing and dancing all the time. And, and so it's just a really different environment. Mm -hmm. And do you know what that person is doing today? I do not. Would you be interested in knowing? I would, uh -huh. but that has been 20 years. Uh huh. Yes. So it would be interesting to know. I don't know of any way that we have managed to uh, keep track mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm also curious about the foods. What were the foods like? Well, the foods were primarily vegetarian. Uh -huh. <clears throat> And uh, it, it's kind of interesting that no matter where we were in, uh, in Africa, the people living there did not have the food for the next day. And they had no refrigeration because they were very poor. Uh, so uh, they would go to the green stores uh, every morning and they would earn the money that day to pay for whatever it was they were buying. Mm -hmm. So so that was, uh, but uh, I, they were not having hamburgers mm -hmm. and hot dogs. Mm -hmm. What was it like for you and Mary Jane to have such a different standard of living between the people 
you were serving and how you were doing? Initially, I think it's, uh, it requires a big adjustment um, because we, we want to respect what the Africans are doing because they're doing the best they can with what they have. Mm -hmm. And uh, we uh, did not want to apply any of our standards from the United States uh, to what they were doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, but it, it's a very interesting time um, when we would go to a village, mm -hmm. the children would just gather around mm -hmm. and uh, they were just very friendly and very loving. And that's sort of the way the Africans are. Did you have any of them working for you? Any of them? Any of them working for you? No. No. So mm -hmm. they were never like in your home or in? No, but I've been in their homes. Uh-huh. Oh. And uh, one time in particular, uh, uh, I stayed in the home of uh, one of the leaders of the organization in Tanzania. and. Uh, it was a very, very interesting time. Uh, you know, they, they, they were operating by candlelight. Uh, not because they didn't have electricity, but the electricity wasn't working, <laughs> which, which is not unusual. <laughs> oh, dear. So, uh, and so we, tra we traveled around quite a bit. Uh, and uh, it, it's, I, I, don't, I can't think of anything that was a negative experience. It was just new experiences, but they were all good. Yeah. And what about the animals? When we would go to the, um, to the Maasai village, uh -huh. uh, it was uh, several miles up a dirt track. It was like going through a zoo where none of the animals were caged. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was very interesting uh -huh. to see all these animals just running loose and so forth. And uh, and when you were when you were in a van, uh, sometimes the elephants would come quite close. Uh -huh. And uh, so it, I mean, I wouldn't have missed it all. Uh -huh. It was great. Uh -huh. Yeah. Did you have any animals? Did you domesticate any? From Africa? Uh -huh. No. no. Uh, there, we, for many years, we lived on acreages. Uh -huh. And uh, so when, with our youngest son, uh, we had all kinds of animals. Because <laughs> we, we lived on a three acre piece and we had a barn and all that sort of thing. And, uh, and so we, uh, we had turkeys and ducks and, and rabbits and all kinds of stuff. Uh -huh. and, uh, one of the things we tried to tell them in the beginning was, don't name them. <laughs> so, yes, but I, I remember uh, my, my youngest son got an African gray parrot. When he got it, it was like in a teacup. But that parent, he had to finally get rid of it because whenever the phone would ring, the parent would answer it as though it was him. <laughs> and you could just see it. it had the same voice and so forth. So finally he got tired of all that. And he said, okay. And he sold it to somebody, but it was very interesting. I mean, those parents are really smart. And how were the parent, you and Mary Jane, smart enough to say not to name those animals? I think we probably saw it on a TV show. <laughs> okay, because um, my husband and I were invited to a family that lived in Glendale, and they had a mini farm. And our oldest daughter is a strong animal lover, and she knew the animals and their names. And when we, we would go there for like a dinner, they would talk about, how they were eating Sam, or they were eating Charlie, and oh. our poor daughter just couldn't eat <laughs> because that wasn't our custom to know the names of. Yeah, we we tried really hard uh, <laughs> to not name them. Uh huh. Yeah. What would your children say, and might be different for each of them? 
What would they say about their experiences with you? They were never with us. They were never with you? No, they. by the time we were going out, uh -huh. um, they were out of the house. They were either in college uh -huh. or they were out of college and working. Um, at this day, all of our children uh, are in their 50s. Uh -huh. So they, they just weren't around. We invited them to come to Venezuela one time, but they, they didn't want to come to Venezuela. So they saw it as too dangerous. So they didn't swallow the adventuresome gene? That no, and actually, actually when we moved to Venezuela, it was a coup going on. <laughs> and um, we sat outside by the pool and finally the, the security people came in and said, we suggest that you go inside. <laughs> <laughs> because it was just, I mean, it was like small planes uh -huh. dropping hand grenades out the, the windows and so forth like that. And it's too bad because uh, that, the guy who was staged in the coup then became the president of the country. Uh -huh. And he ruined the country. Uh -huh. so. He wasn't a very good leader. No, and the, play, the person that replaced him was worse. Mm -hmm. Your grandchildren are in their 30s, right? 30s, mm -hmm. 40s? What stories do they know about their grandparents and their impact on the world? Well, because we've never been around them when we were out doing things like that, um, none of them live in Arizona. Mm -hmm. uh, they're mostly in uh, Florida and uh, Pennsylvania and Illinois, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's really interesting because our oldest daughter, who had five children, mm -hmm. she loves children. Uh -huh. Well, the five children she had also like to have children, <laughs> which is why we have nine great grandchildren, uh -huh. and uh, they try and get together. Uh, couple of times of the year, so the cousins can know each other. Uh -huh. And at this point, Mary Jane and I are not able to travel. Uh -huh. so, uh, so we're glad they're doing that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Occasionally, uh, one of our sons or daughters will make their way out. I think our other son just moved from Florida to Arkansas. Mm -hmm. So, but it's, uh, if I'd have known really no I, no, I shouldn't say that. Uh, you know, when, you're, when you don't live in the same place mm -hmm. where they live, mm -hmm. maintaining relationships is very difficult. Mm -hmm. And it was for us. And yet I remember seeing a beautiful book that I think your daughter made for you, with the grandchildren oh, in it. Yes. Just, I mean, they yeah, she does that said, annually. Oh, I love those books. Yeah. Uh, in yeah, terms of nice. the stories and, and keeping you connected. Yeah, and we have to say, okay, well, listen, could you write the names of all the children? Uh-huh. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid we spent a little more time mm -hmm. uh, out doing other things in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, just, we just weren't living where our children were living. Mm -hmm. And may I ask what it has been like for your Korean daughter? She called us today. Uh huh. And uh, she joined us when she was nine years old. Mm -hmm. She had been abandoned in Korea. Uh, she had polio. And uh, she's uh, and and. Uh, we were concerned because we were afraid that she might be falling. And uh, the doctor said, well, it, it, she probably will, but she said, don't worry about it, because she's built kind of close to the ground. <laughs> so she, had, she has one leg that they call jello. Uh -huh. And uh, every once in a while, it gives up. Uh -huh. But she's, she is so strong. Uh -huh. um, you know, like I said, well, when we moved to uh, across the street from my soon-to-be right wife, you know, her comment about, well, the, 
neighborhood went downhill. When we brought that nine-year-old into our family, it raised the family. I mean, she was, she was just a really an amazing person. And we tried to keep her out of school for a while. Then the school got a hold of us and said, we don't think you should do that. Just right. let her come. Mm -hmm. So um, we asked our uh, youngest son, who was in the same school, okay, well, keep your eye on her and don't, don't let her get where she doesn't need to be. And uh, he came home the first night and he said, she doesn't need me. She's <laughs> surrounded by people. <laughs> and uh, apparently what she was doing was she didn't speak English, but she knew their names, she said. So she'd stand at the front door of the, where they come in for the class during the day. She'd say, hi, Janie, hi, Billy, hi. Yeah. Well, she had a lot of friends. Great social skills. Huh? Yes, very. And she came with them? Or did she learn them? No, she came with them because I think for a number of years, she was, uh, because she was nine at the time, uh, she was probably caring for the younger children mm -hmm. in the orphanage. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Did she ever go back to the orphanage? Uh, when she was in high school, uh -huh. uh, there was a trip mm -hmm. to um, Korea, mm -hmm. and, uh, and she went on that trip. Mm -hmm. And so we have lots of pictures. Mm -hmm. What was that like for her? Well, she fits in really well uh -huh. because she's so friendly. Yes, she's very adaptable. Yeah, and uh, and that is what she is. And uh, she's a prize. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. And what's she doing today? Um, part of the time she's taking care of a granddaughter. Uh huh. Uh, for one of her daughters. And uh, part of the time she worked for um, uh, one of the coffee shops. Uh -huh. She would go in early in the morning to make the coffee and, and uh, get the donuts ready and all that sort of thing. Um, then one day um, a lady talked to her and said, you're really good at this. She said, I'd like to recommend that you come over to our school. Well, she went over to the school, and she was hired to work in their food area, and uh, and she's still doing that. Mm -hmm. And and her husband, who used to be a printer, kind of like printing machines were a block block long, mm -hmm. um, but he's always working the night shift. So in the last three years, he got a job with some friends of his learning how to build um, countertops and things like that. So he's in the construction, uh, in the housing business. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she still has a kind heart. Oh, I mean, she just, she just makes us smile when we hear her on the phone. <laughs> yeah. And she wants to come to Arizona. And uh, I say, well, Right at the moment, that's not even a possibility. Uh huh. Right. But someday she'll make it. She's a very determined person. <laughs> but she's used that that uh, determination in a very positive way. Yeah. Yeah, and it, and she's a very interesting lady in terms of how much she knows. Uh, she amazes us mm -hmm. with how much knowledge she has accumulated over the years. Uh -huh. you know, we, did, we weren't sure what that was going to turn out like. Mm -hmm. um, but it worked out well. Uh, when she first came, uh, she slept on the floor, which is traditional for that. Yes. <clears throat> and then, uh, and our oldest son would see her on the floor, and then he'd pick her up and put her in the bed. Uh -huh. And by the morning, she was back on the floor. <laughs> but she did learn how to get to sleep in the bed. Uh -huh. yeah. and, and the four 
children are close together. In age? In relationships. Do they stay connected? Um, not really. Uh -huh. um, because uh, one's in Arkansas who had been in Florida. Uh -huh. uh, one's in, uh, another one's in Florida. Uh, and then, uh, where are they are? I have a great memory. <laughs> it's just short. You know, they, they tell me, you know, I remember going to a, 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 a class here uh -huh. at Westminster and was being taught on um, dementia. Uh -huh. And it says, you never really learn, you never really, really lose what's in your brain. Mm -hmm. And then she put up a picture of ASU Stadium. And she said, before it was up here. What you don't know is it moved down here. <laughs> and so she said, but Mary Jane and I are great together mm -hmm. because we generally know enough to help each other with uh -huh. whatever it is we're trying to think of. Uh -huh. so. <laughs> If you use any of this time to reminisce about past adventures, the two of you. Oh, Mary, Mary Jane and I? Uh-huh. Oh, we talk about it a lot. Uh-huh. Yeah, especially when I was writing this up. Uh-huh. <laughs> because most of it was back in the, you know, 20 years ago. Uh-huh. It's in a big filing system. I have a lot of journals. Uh huh. Yeah. So occasionally we get the journals out and read them. Uh huh. So. And you believe them? I wrote them. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be very productive for me to say, well, now, why did I say that? <laughs> but do you wonder? No, I think the whole the whole thing that we did when uh, we were away from Arizona. Uh huh. Uh, was really such a learning experience mm -hmm. um, that we think it was the best time of our lives. Mm -hmm. you know? oh. And you can feel very proud about everything you've contributed to the world. You've well, sometimes, sometimes I think of that. Well, you've touched many people's lives, and they've touched your lives. Yes. Um, so sometimes I think about that, and then now in my older years, I think to myself, I wish I would have done that a little different. Really? <laughs> and how, what things would you have done differently? Well, I can remember a time that I was up on a hillside with, a, with, a, with an African gentleman who was a part of the, uh, in fact, I would call it the county structure, and uh, he said, well, let's go have tea. And so I'm sitting there, and I have an agenda that I am really trying to get done. Being a good American. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, uh, and he's sitting there, and he's not having a time problem. <laughs> so that was my first lesson in being relational. Mm -hmm. They don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was all beneficial. Mm -hmm. Even the things that uh, didn't work out mm -hmm. uh, as as we thought they would. Mm -hmm. So, but we've had a good life. Yes. God has been in this, and uh, we have had a wonderful life, mm -hmm. which includes Westminster. Absolutely. And you've contributed a great deal to this culture. You and Mary Jane Cal. Well, so. it is a great place to live. Mm -hmm. It is. And a safe place to live. When people get irritated mm -hmm. because of the, all of the things that we can't do, mm -hmm. I say, um, would you rather be in a home? Mm -hmm. She said, no way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, we're very fortunate. To yes, we are. Yeah. Am I out of time yet? You are. But it's
Is there anything more you're going to wish you had said that you didn't say? Yeah, there probably is. Okay. But it probably takes about two days for me to get there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'd be happy to hear about it in two days. <laughs> and we really thank you for sharing. Well, this you're has welcome. Been a lot. It was a pleasure for me. Thank you, Bill.